Hi everyone and welcome back to another installment of my series Thrift Across New England. If you're new here, welcome. I work full time as a reseller on Poshmark and on eBay and I create videos for resellers here on YouTube. I'm in the middle or towards the end of a series called Thrift Across New England and I am taking you thrifting with me to every single state in New England. So I've covered almost everything. I still need to go to Maine. And today I went to the New Hampshire bins with a good friend, Brittany, who you might know as Shop Foxborough on Instagram and on YouTube. Um, she is a vintage reseller extraordinaire. I've learned so much from her. And we went to the bins. So let's hop back in time. I have a quick thrift with me and I only picked up about 20 items. We decided to do one rotation and then go have a really nice lunch at Not Your Average Joe's. And I'm so happy with that decision. But um, I got a few things that I do wanna share with you. If you wanna see more of the episodes from Thrift Across New England, you should definitely subscribe to my channel like this video if you're having a good time i hope you enjoy it you know ladies and gentlemen i've already been to paris already been to rome what did i do but miss my home oh, 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 i have been a west I hope you all are enjoying my little jingle. That is the New England song, which was originally written and performed by Jonathan Richmond. And the version that you hear here uh, was performed by my brother-in-law and myself and my husband, Jay. So always fun to hear that little jingle. I'm happy some of you are enjoying it. So I dug right in once I walked into the bins. Um, I didn't spot Brittany right away, but we will see her very soon. I'm just making my way through the first bin that I came across, found a few sweatshirts I was considering. Um, the Black Dog sweatshirt had a little bit too much wear on it and the resale value of those sweatshirts isn't as great as you would think. Um, the Black Dog is a cafe, bakery, and gift shop here on Cape Cod in Massachusetts and also started at uh, Martha's Vineyard. Um, and it used to be a pretty hot commodity to come by. Uh, several years ago, but the resale value on those sweatshirts aren't as great anymore and there was some staining um, I'm definitely being more selective. I've done a lot of thrifting this month because of thrift across New England And so I've gotten to the point where I've had to become pretty Selective about what I am taking home with me, but I, which I think in general is just really good practice for me especially who tends to buy more than I need at any given moment. Those airy leggings weren't bad, but there was a little too much wash wear on them. And by wash wear, I just mean, you know, look like they've been worn and washed quite a few times and they are starting to get some pilling. I'm doing my editing um, in Cape Cod actually right now and I'm sitting on the back deck and so hopefully the wind in the background isn't too bad. I was obsessed with this vintage coat and I was very excited to show it to Brittany. I thought it was so pretty. She tried it on, it was beautiful on her. I found so many winter items in this lot. I joke during the haul because I say that I should have called this um, Christmas in July because I found so many winter things that I was hesitant to take home but some I just couldn't leave behind. Keep going over that um, cape. I think that's like a little kids show um, costume. I don't really pick up costumes much anymore unless it's pretty unique and and that's just a personal preference because I think costumes sell really well especially in the month of September and I even think costumes do okay um, like during the holiday season for dress up for little ones um, but it's just not my favorite thing to pick up so I didn't grab that this is LuLaRoe I've pretty much stopped picking up LuLaRoe unless it's a really really special piece for like next to nothing um, oh I almost grabbed this too because I do like Harry Potter this is a Harry Potter robe which I thought was kind of cute um, I put it in my cart but I end up not taking it home with me when I'm doing my final selection would you have grabbed that Harry Potter robe <laughs> Harry Potter stuff does tend to sell for me but I have a lot of it in my closet I'm not like a super fan or anything I just think it's fun 
This blazer was kind of cute, but I don't think I could find a brand on it. Maybe it's just like a lightweight jacket. I like to pick up these jeans when they're made by L.L. Bean with the fleece or flannel liner, especially for winter. Oh my goodness, I'm about to find Brittany and I startle her and I feel so bad. Um, just goes to show you how much we get into the zone when we're working. Hey girl, Brit, Brittany. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Did you find any belts? Uh, no, I didn't find a single belt, but I did find two pairs of shoes. Let me see. Which I don't know the brand. It's Cravings with a K, but I thought they were cute. I love the heel and the platform. They're in really good shape. So cute. Love them. I decided to pass on this Sears Robux vintage work suit, which I knew probably had some value, but it just wasn't in my wheelhouse and I just didn't want to get it because it was so bulky. Um, but I want to show you some comps. I found it interesting when I looked at some of these comps or listings that some of the values were pretty high. Um, this one's listed for 80, there's another one listed for 149, and one that I saw that actually sold for 70. And what I think you learn about yourself, or at least what I've learned about myself as a reseller, is that even items that I know will make me money, sometimes I pass on because I am not like passionate about the piece. This item had some damage to it. It was bulky to store, it was men's, it wasn't anything that appealed to me from a fashion standpoint. Point. And I think it's interesting because as resellers, we all have our different personalities and some of us sell strictly for money and some of us sell based on style and fashion and what appeals to us. And I think it's important to realize who you are in your journey as a reseller. And I'm a little bit of both. As much as I love to make money, if something doesn't really speak to me sometimes, I will end up leaving it behind. And this was a good example. I found a squishmallow. <laughs> so the shoe game for me definitely wasn't great on this day. You can see how, again, the, the bins are pretty empty. Shoes at this location are very hot and people run to the shoes. And I arrived about 10 minutes after the rotation started and then I didn't make my way over to the shoes until pretty deep into my visit. So there really wasn't much for me to choose from, but I was happy to see that they had banded them together. That's a step in the right direction. Sometimes they do here, but not very often. So I'm scanning a little bit. There's the books. Is Brittany doing her thing. She had a really good day from what I could see. I'm excited to watch her haul. These boots were kind of cute. Um, I can't remember what the brand was. Probably nothing special because I decided to put them back. I don't even remember. Are you a shoe person? I love to find shoes. I've been pretty picky about shoes lately though because I haven't really had a lot of time to restore shoes like I used to. So even though some appeal to me, I leave them behind unless they're in really good condition. All right, I didn't look at the comps very well on this bear and apparently I should have grabbed him. That was a Build-A-Bear mummy. Um, definitely a miss there. Some of the comps were low, but a lot of them weren't. So and plush is easy to send trying to branch out a little bit and oftentimes if I'm not finding a ton of stuff in the clothing department I will venture out and look at hard goods and I often find shoes and stuff and handbags thrown in um, these are dance goes but they were pretty beat up and had some discoloration I love to flip dance goes they're not like my favorite shoe but they are very consistent and I find them a lot at the bins these are real traditional like nurses dance go but I'm not sure if I found the other one I ended up leaving all of those behind I often find Burton at this location as well and I really do love to sell Burton but this backpack was pretty beat up definitely on the lookout for backpacks right now with back to school right around the corner You definitely do often have to kiss a lot of frogs before you find a prince at the bins. Um, but I really do love the hunt and I think you guys do too. I wasn't going to include the New Hampshire bins in my Thrift Across New England series only because I had, I've been here so many times. Um, but when I asked in previous videos, most people indicated that they did want to see the bins again. So here we are. I don't know that I had any showstoppers here today, but 
I often find that when I go home and I look through all the things that I got, I'm pleasantly surprised um, by how many quality pieces I found. Those are some American Eagle jeans that I thought were cute. I struggle a little bit selling patterned jeans, um, but if that's your thing, certainly grab them. They're kind of cute, actually. They're like a paisley, almost like a bandana print. I'm sure I would have made my money back. I tend to pick up a lot of American Eagle at the bins. I left this behind, too, and that was J. Crew. Oh, that's why. Hole in the under the arm. I'm gonna look up the comps on those jeans and see what I may have passed. Uh, this was Lily Pulitzer and I got kind of excited. Not that Lily's like the greatest seller, but um, at the bins, it's kind of a fun find. And then I think I flipped it over and there was like a giant stain. So next up, I found a Tahari jacket that I was agonizing over. And finally, Brittany insisted on looking up some comps for it. It was really nice and it was in great condition. It had kind of this quilt pattern. So I will let you listen to our conversation. Uh, okay. Uh, 115, 111, 180, hmm. 145. All right, those, those are convincing. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany found some really cute stuff over here. It's fun shopping with her. She just ran the comps on this cone. I know, I have to make sure you put it back in your Convinced so no me to keep it. it. <laughs> Look at this old North Face. It's got like patches or something oh, yeah. on the back. I mean, it's pretty faded as a kid's, but I thought that was cute. I liked it because of the patches. No, it says it's women's. Just like a small or something? Yeah. All right. Like yeah, I think it'll be cute. You know, pickings are slim when I get an ugly sweater. That is really cute. Come on. <laughs> I love it. I just like the back. It's really cute. We're starting to think about that. <laughs> um, what was this? You know, I was thinking about um, like Halloween yeah, they are parties, but I saw the little wear on them. Yeah. I was thinking I was going to put them back. They're a nine, though. That's a good size. Mm. They're kind of fun, right? Yeah. What is this? I'd never heard of this brand before. I saw a couple of these. I'm sure it's like nothing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, get rid of that. <laughs> I thought this was a cute L.L. Bean jacket. I just got to look it over and make sure there's no stains. Today's the day of jackets. I know, Brittany, I just looked into his eyes and I think he needs to come home with me. Yeah, that happens to me every time. Oh, yeah. He's so... He's so helpless. <laughs> Lori! All right, baby. <laughs> okay. Thank you, I just have this one little guy. I really enjoyed shopping with Brittany. She definitely is patient when she shops and it was good that she did some research on that Tahari jacket because the comps on that were great and I was kind of being a little bit lazy because I didn't want to take home bulky coats. I thought of titling this video Christmas in July because I found some things that are much more appropriate for winter, which happens often up in New Hampshire. I find a lot of outdoor items at the New Hampshire bins, a lot of jackets, a lot of boots. Uh, and so it can be really great in the winter time to find outerwear because outerwear has a great return. But I am starting to think about fall. It's crazy to say, but you know, June, July, and certainly August, we are thinking about back to school and fall and boots and cool weather. By now, I should be listing all of my summer stuff and I definitely have to start thinking about the fall, even though it is 95 degrees out right now. So let's get started. Um, I feel like you always know that maybe the clothes aren't amazing for me when I start venturing into hard goods, but I found this Irish setter and I picked him up and put him down because I always, sometimes I pick up breakables and then I never list them, but I'm proud to say that I already listed this little fella. What got me was that he was made in Japan, uh, which usually indicates that he's vintage. So there's the markings on him, but it was his face. I'm coming in close. I mean, how could I leave him behind? How cute is he? And the comps weren't so bad. I listed him at $40. 
it was the eyes that got me. There was only one other listed and I believe that was listed at $39.99. So I listed right around the same place. I might go in and lower that price a little bit. I was really excited to pull this out of the bin. I love picking up Spiritual Gangster. And this says, be the light. I love the message. I love the brand. I love that it was at the bins. I ended up getting 20 items and I spent maybe $27. Brittany found this one for me. This was in the same bin. She's like, you like this brand? And she just handed it to me. It's fun shopping with someone who's looking for things that are slightly different than you, because, you know, I would find vintage pieces that I wouldn't, you know, know what to do with or normally pick up and show Brittany. And she found a couple modern pieces like this that she gave to me. She also does sell modern, um, but her vintage stuff is really great. She's so free flowing with the vintage. I agonize over vintage sometimes, like I'll pick it up and I'll look at it. Not sure if I should get it. It's hard to find comps on vintage sometimes as well. So it was great to be there with like a vintage pro. I will definitely link her information in the description and follow her on Instagram. She does these lookbooks every season. She puts so much thought into her channel. She gives some great information about vintage and how to date it, how to price it. She also offers a service where she will do a write-up for your vintage piece because she has so much knowledge. She can do like quick research for you and find some great information if you don't want to do that. And in most cases, it will up the value of your piece so you'll make more money. Okay, this is one of the winter coats that I decided to get and I just got it off the wash. It has this beautiful like new faux fur thing that zips on the hood. It's also reversible. It's a little bit of staining on the red side, but to be honest, like it's so much softer to wear this material on the outside. The brand is Lole, L-O-L-E with the accent over the E. And it's right on, oh, it's right here, sorry. Here it is. This is a really nice down jacket. Um, it has some really beautiful features in this like taupey color, zips here, pockets here, really excellent condition. I've been picking up bathing suits. I probably need to like chill out on them a little bit, but my favorite thing to pick up is a one piece black bathing suit because I feel like it's flattering on everybody. Uh, and this is a really pretty halter by Speedo. Um, and typically when I find Speedos, I feel like they're more like performance looking, like they look like you'd be on a swim team wearing them. But I thought the style of this was really cute and it's got a high back, which is nice. And it is a size 14. This is just a beautiful lag and look piece in an extra large. It's like this waffle knit in like a kind of a periwinkle blue. I thought the buttons were really interesting on it. 100% cotton. I thought it was a great piece for summertime. It's an extra large. The brand is called Focus Casual Lifestyle Collection and um, the comps are really good. I think I have this listed at 50, but then when I was photographing it this morning, I noticed that there's a little bit of wear on the cotton. So I think I might lower my asking price to 40 or $45 um, and then probably take offers as well, but a really nice piece and I think in a great size too. This was exciting for me because I, if you're an Amazon seller, like Squishmallow is where it's at. People have gone crazy um, looking for Squishmallow on Amazon. I am not ungated in this brand to sell. Um, so I'll probably, I listed him on Facebook Marketplace. If you haven't seen my recent video, um, I started cross posting to Facebook Marketplace using Vendu and I just did a video on it. And this is like the perfect thing for me, in my opinion, to cross post to a place like Facebook Marketplace and eBay. I don't really sell plush on Poshmark, but this little guy is a unicorn and he's relatively rare. I mean, I think I have him listed for just $20, but at the bins, he was probably 50 cents, which I was pretty excited about. Isn't he so cute? Have you heard of Squishmallow? I don't have little kids, so it's not something that I've been like on the hunt for, but I was really happy to find him. And then I was walking by this couple at the bins and they said, she found Squishmallow. And I was like, that's right. I was excited. And in that same bin, I found this little guy. Another reason why it felt like Christmas in July and June, T.Y like the little Beanie Baby brand um, that now has these big eyes. He's like a eight, $10 thing. Again, quick listing for eBay, not really my wheelhouse, but super easy to list these things and they can't break and people don't typically send them back. Hard goods really do have some appeal, especially when they're plush hard goods and they can't break. Those are my favorite. All right, this I picked up because it looks like vintage North Face. Um, 
I thought this was really cool. It has these patches on the back. Um, I can come. In. I thought this was a really cool pickup. It's cropped. It's a size small. I'm not sure like how to date this. Kumbu Climbing School, the North Face. Never stop exploring. Probably list this around thirty dollars. This piece uh, was kind of funny because I really liked the graphic on the front of it. And I don't really like to spend a lot of money on tees, but I liked this. I thought it was cute. It's like a cream color. I don't know if it's single stitch. It's not. But then I got it home and I never looked at the back. I probably would not have picked it up if I had seen this, but I don't know. Would you have grabbed this? The front graphic is pretty cool uh, with the waterfall and stuff. If anybody wants it, let me know. I'll give it to you for a really good price. I forgot to mention these that sold. These are Crocs and they are little jellies with an open toe. They sold for $28. So even after Poshmark fees, this paid for the bulk of my haul. One of the other brands that I typically find up in New Hampshire in Maine is L.L. Bean. L.L. Bean headquarters are in Freeport, Maine. And so they send a lot of their stuff to um, the Goodwill outlet specifically in Maine gets a bunch of their returns and some of their damaged items and stuff. I have found some great L.L. Bean pieces in New Hampshire and Maine and this is so nice. This is just a quilted jacket. It has this fine corduroy on the inside. I've al already washed it. It's like new condition. It's an extra small and um, it retails for $159. It's on their current website for $159. So I think I have it priced at $75. It only takes a few pieces to really make it worth your while at the bins. This is what goes to that um, jacket that I showed you earlier. Another Christmas piece. <laughs> I'm not a big ugly sweater person. I really am not. Um, this Blizzard Bay brand uh, Brittany said does well. She thought like I'd probably get around $25 for it, but I mean there are just way too many cat lovers out there to not pick this up and the cat has like faux fur and these little glasses. I mean this is so awesome. I mean even me who I'm not a big ugly sweater person like couldn't leave this behind. You know the little fair aisle with the cats and the, I mean it's so great. That's something I probably wouldn't pick up if I was just thrifting even if it was a good price because it was out of season I would probably be like ah not today. Okay, the winter extravaganza continues. I found this really cool Patriots hat. I always like picking up New England Patriots stuff that has like the old logo. Um, and this is New Era. So 47 and New Era are two of the brands for sports stuff that I like to pick up. So this is New Era. It's in really good condition. Um, it's one size, nice fleece lined. So cute. I thought that was pretty unique. So I'll probably list that for $18 or $20. This was really nice too. This is a wool hat with these awesome bears on it. Like this is, if this isn't New Hampshire, I don't know what is. It was made in New Hampshire. So it's We Z Farm. And it says by Ellen Weston, Hancock, New Hampshire, USA. This looks like an actual farm. So I'm guessing this maybe was sold in their gift shop because I did look online. There weren't really any comps, but I found the farm, but I didn't find on the website like a shop or anything, but I'm assuming they sold this in the shop. But how cute is this? It's wool, it's really nice, and it's in excellent condition. I loved the colors in this. I feel like I buy a lot of scarves that I don't end up listing, but when I do list them, they tend to sell. And if I don't list them, I like to toss them in with a bundle if somebody buys like a real big bundle or if somebody pays for something and they just buy it outright without sending me an offer. And this is Laundry by Shelly Seagal, which is nice. It's just like an acrylic polyester blend, but it also has metallic. There's the tag. And it's just these colors that I really love, like blush, soft, just very pretty and neutral. I think this would do really well. This is a Woolrich scarf, uh, like a shawl. And I thought it was so, so pretty. I love leopard print. Has like the little tassels here and um, it's in excellent condition. Woolrich usually uh, makes their things out of wool uh, and this is a synthetic. So this was an acrylic brand, blend, but it's still in excellent condition. I thought it was really, really nice. <laughs> More Christmas stuff. This is a, looks like a poly flinder, but there's no size tag on it or anything. Um, maybe it was handmade, but it has all this beautiful smocking and just like a perfect traditional little kids, uh, little girl, probably like a 2T or 3T holiday dress. I'll definitely get that listed on eBay. This is definitely something I should sell on eBay. Brittany also has an Etsy shop, 
which is something I would consider doing with some of these vintage pieces. It's just like one more platform to maintain. But again, Vendu kind of makes it easy to cross post. Um, I do have a link for Vendu in my description. If you're at all interested, you get 25% off your first month of service, but you can also try it for free. If you want to cross post five listings a month, you get for free if you want to give it a try. But let me know if you sell on Etsy, if you have luck. I get the impression that you get like a little more money for stuff on Etsy if it's vintage and if you know like exactly what you're listing. This was damaged, but so worth it in my opinion. I'm not a huge Lily Pulitzer person, but this is 100% linen and I thought it was in really beautiful condition aside from it's a hole, but it's not like a, it doesn't look like a moth hole. It actually looks like it's very fixable. Like some of the fabric is still up here, but I'll show you a little hole in the back. Um, but it's in the back and it's, it's a medium, uh, but it has this little piece over here that buttons over or you can wear it open, but it's so gorgeous. It looks like it's never been like laundered or anything. And that is actually a good thing in my opinion, because it's so soft, like nothing has been shrunk everything looks like it's in really beautiful condition except for that little hole so i'm going to stitch that and it looks like my battery is going to run out soon last up was just this isotoner pair of gloves i figured i would scan these maybe i could sell these through amazon or throw them on ebay again another winter item so i hope you really enjoyed my winter haul from the goodwill outlets in new hampshire it's always so much fun to see what treasures you can find at the bins again i got 20 21 items and if even if i got like an average of $20 per item back. That would be $400 in sales, which would be really nice for this haul. So my battery did die. I just changed batteries and I just want to say thank you so much for watching. That's all for today. Um, be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Let me know if there's a particular shop you want me to go to. Um, people have been sending me locations to go to and it's been really exciting to kind of add places to my little bucket list of shops that I want to go to and go thrifting. So thank you for that. If you have any great recommendations, let me know. Be sure to subscribe if you wanna see more from the series and other reseller content. I release videos about two times a week. Thanks again to Brittany for meeting me. Be sure to follow her on her reselling journey. Yeah, that's all for today. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll be back really soon with another video. Take care. Bye. I have zero business and a It's magnificent, but so is me. I'm talking.